all right we are back we are continuing our rebuild series i don't know if you want to really call it a rebuild team went to the stanley cup last year but we are going to try to take every single team in the league to the stanley cup and win them a stanley cup so yes we will be using teams like the lightning and yes we will be using teams like the boston bruins we just won't have as much rebuilding quote-unquote work to do for teams like the Bruins who are very very solid as is right now but we take a look at the team we are looking at again taking a look at the salary player salary budget 78 million so they got about two and a half three mil to work with so not a whole lot to work with there for the Bruins but it's the Boston Bruins they got a pretty solid team as is if we can just make one or two maybe trade deadline type moves I feel like we'll be in great shape Taking a look at their team, though, we already know about that dynamic and dominant first line with Marshan, Bergeron, and Pasternak. It is very, very solid. The question we're going to have with this, as we've talked about this in previous videos, is there is a serious, serious problem, it seems like, where if you put a very a whole bunch of really good players together, they don't put up like dominating, extravagant 100-point type seasons that you might expect. But they kind of go kind of mess sometimes. We'll have to monitor that for the Bergeron, Marchand, and Pasternak line. Obviously, I don't really want to have to change it because that's what they rock with. But if we can change that and put like a pass on the second line or maybe a Marchand on the second line and improve the team, maybe even Bergeron. Okay, let's not get crazy here. But if that's what we got to do to improve the team, it's what we got to do to improve the team. But just taking a quick look right now, the first two lines are looking pretty solid. I'm sure we're thinking David Backus doesn't need to be there. I feel like he can play some kills and penalties off, though. Can he kill some penalties off, though? Defensive awareness, 84. Faceoffs, 81. Not the greatest. How about Heinen? Oh, geez. Heinen, 70 on the draws and 84 on the defensive awareness. He should not be taking faceoffs. That might be our only option right now, though. So that's what we're going to have to stick with. I'm assuming 70. Ah, uh, actually, Corrali is 81 on the draws. If we switch Corrali with Heinen, how does that look? It didn't really affect anything besides that i was hoping maybe it'd give us a little boost on the overall it looks like we're going to stay at a plus zero and plus one and that's about the way it's looking i'm going to switch some things around as we always do kind of just tinker and tinkle we'll see what happens here tinkle and tinkle if that was a word that would be a fantastic one not seeing a whole bunch of changes that are happening there we'll keep an eye on corrali and heinen though we'll see what happens there i want to put the guy that can win the face off that center though right defense mcavoy and krug chara carlo miller and more a very solid d pair or d core in general i feel like we shouldn't have to make any defensive trades and obviously same with the goaltending halak has been playing solid rask being the stud that he is two goalies we aren't going to worry about changing like i said i think what we're going to do here We'll just sim up some games. We'll sim up a few games. We'll see how she goes. At that point, then we can make a trade to the power play is looking decent. Again, something we won't really mess with unless we're struggling for a power play. You really ain't going to improve that penalty kill. Corrali, Nordstrom, Chara. They do not like our second line. Heining, Wagner, Moore, Carlo. What is the problem here? Is it Wagner, 90, 83, 84, 70 on the face? Also, Heinen, that is the problem here. Let's see if we can move. That's not going to work. Let's take Heinen out. We already talked about Heinen's face offs difficulties. Maybe we put Bacchus there. He's not playing on any penalty kill right now. Is he changing in current line? Just like that. That Nope, nope. It was like, Bacchus, you're not playing defense. Forget about that. All right. Bacchus was good at defense back in his day. I mean, like 12 or 20 some years ago, back when he was in his prime. But he was good at it, if I recall properly. Who was the other guy? Corrali. Corrali was the guy that can win the draws. We'll see if that changes it. Minus one. Regardless, he can win draws, though. If we can get some face-off possession there, that'll help out that line a little bit there. That is definitely a concern for Heinen at a 70. Penalty kill, three-man penalty kill. That's, oh, wow, that is not good at all. McAvoy, Charles. Maybe we take McAvoy out. Is McAvoy an offensive defenseman in this game? Top four defenseman, elite. He's got great defensive awareness. I don't care what he is. He's got the defensive awareness that's needed. We look at that penalty kill again. That is rough. Minus threes across the board. There's got to be better answers than that, doesn't there? What can we possibly do to not be minus threes everywhere? That is brutal. I don't recall ever having a minus three like that. What can I possibly change? Carlo, top four defenseman, and more top six defense. That's what you want there, really. What if we switch these two around? Does that change anything? I can't imagine it will. I, I don't know where else to go here. We have defense. All the defense we can possibly use. Did we have Miller out there? I mean, I can't imagine an offensive defenseman is going to help the case here. And it's not. I guess we're just going to stick with what we have. Is Carlo already in a line? I forget if we have Carlo in a line. He is not in a line. He is now Carlo Moore. I guess we're stuck with a minus three right there in a penalty kill. We'll see how it happens. We'll start simming up some games here and see how the boys go out and play. I expect winning nonetheless over there, Boston. Look at these guys. Boston winning every single preseason game. Preseason champs. If we know anything about the Browns, going undefeated in preseason is not a good sign. But I don't think that's going to be the case for Boston. A very solid team. 
going out there on a tough stretch early in Arizona, in Vegas, in Colorado, and picking up two victories. They're losing to the Devils and the Ducks, though. You don't want to lose those games. 10-4? to 4. Who was on the ice for that one? That's their minus three on the penalty kill right there. We have a five on three for five minutes, and it has put every biscuit they had in the basket. That is crazy. 10-4. to 4. We're going to have to keep an eye on that one. Regardless, we started the preseason on fire. 7, 5, 8, and 6. Not the hottest of hot starts right now for these Bruins. We have, uh, let's keep going. Let's just keep going for now. We're 9 and 6. Get a better sample size of what's going on with this team here. Get about 20, 25 games played before we start changing things up. Because it does, you know, you do start the season sometimes. You start hot, you get cold, or you start cold and you get hot. That could be the case for these Bruins. Here we are seeing them start to pick up a few victories here. Back to back over there in the back to back in Tampa or in Toronto and over there versus Washington. But again, 15 and 9, it's not terrible. Not terrible, but I think we can do better. I know this team is 18 and 9 good without making improvements, but if we can make some improvements, I think we are even better than 18 and 9. Don't forget, we got Toronto and we got Tampa in this division that we have to get past before the second round is even complete, before we even get to the third round. It is a gauntlet over here in this division in the Atlantic. So Boston's got to be stacked. This stack can get if they want to get past those two powerhouses defensively and offensively. Defensively, probably even better. I mean, I don't think we're going to go out there and pick up multiple 80 point scores, but if we can get a couple lockdown defensemen, maybe shut down that potent offense in Toronto and in Tampa, that might help us. We'll see how this team's doing. Now, 24 and 12, top of the division right now. The Lightning are actually struggling. 42 points, 19 and 12. I don't really call that struggling. 63 points? Are you kidding me? I was over here talking about how this team might be struggling with the three stud players on the first line. 63 points. That is nuts. That might be the highest I've seen when it comes to a first line this shortly through or this quickly through the season. The guy's on pace for 120. That is insane. Pasternak the go or Pasternak the go. I like Pasternak better. Can I just call him Pasternak? Pasternak just, it doesn't feel right. Pasternak does. Pasternak's okay. We could just call, call him Pasternak. I don't know. We call him some of everything. I, I like Pasternak, though. It just looks cool. There's no E between the E and the R, though, or the R and the T. But regardless, guys, it's a freaking legend. At the end of the day, look at him killing it. 18%. Minus four out of Krejci. I don't like seeing that, Krejci. We need you boys there on the second, third, and fourth lines to go out there and actually, you know, play defense because that's your job. The first line does all the goal scoring. What was it? Boston had, like, three goals. It was going into Toronto this weekend by anybody that wasn't their first line. That was crazy. That first line's just that dominant, though. If it's working for him, it's working for him. Take a look at who's been struggling here. Minus seven out of Zdeno Char. That is not, that's not Char. Minus seven out of Nordstrom. Three goals, nine assists. That is a struggle, Nordstrom. You want to get cut from the team, buddy? 79 overall, because it's making it, you know, it's coming. It's coming right now. Let's take a look at some stats here. 33 giveaways, 21 takeaways. Yeah, that's negative. That is not good. By the way, Char, 37 by 16. Speaking of not good, why are you giving a puck away so much, Char? Lucky for you, you've been playing well besides that. You've been blocking shots. I hope so. You're like 6,000 feet tall. That would be ideal for you there. David Backus. How's Backus been playing? Backus is a plus two. So he's actually been doing solid. Wagner plus six. It's that Nordstrom and Corrali line, though. That's the one that's struggling right now. Minus 11 out of Richie. Richie must be playing with them guys as well. We've got to change things up. That is the line that is going to need a little bit of work here. The Richie, back, the Nordstrom, and Corrali line. I think that's that line. Maybe the, I'd assume they're all on the same line. That's pretty rough if there's two guys not on that line together. We'll take a look here just in case. Yeah, Corrali, Ritten, Nordstrom, and Richie's. Yeah, that is definitely the line with the issues right now. Let's see what we're looking at here. Fourth line forward, top nine potential. He doesn't have the role to play in this line. I understand. Corrali, same story. And Nordstrom, same story. Do we need to switch that all around? Third line, third line. Yeah, those guys should be here. This goes here. This goes here. Does that change anything? That did. Did that change? Yeah, it did. I love these guys because that's where they belong. So that's where these guys belong, but that's not going to fix the issue, I don't think, because Wagner's still a fourth line guy. Maybe we go up to a right wing. We could find a second, third line type of right wing to pair with one of these guys. That might do the trick here. We'll sim up a few more games. I think we're going to make trade deadline moves only with this Boston Bruins team. I don't think we need to make too many moves to overly stack them, try to keep it somewhat competent if possible here, but team's doing solid right now. We'll go ahead and sim up. Close to where that trade deadline was. We'll see if switching those lines made a difference there. Those guys were just absolutely killing it. It was probably on the ice for those 10 goals against Tampa. I was like, let's just stick the third line out there. Every time they went out there, just tapping it in. 28 and 14, though, for these Bruins right now. Pretty solid. 3-1 loss to Winnipeg. What are Winnipeg's doing this year? I've not seen. They've been struggling a little bit. 
stopping the puck from going in the back of the net. What are they doing in this sim? Wow, we are on a losing streak. A massive losing streak. What is that? A five gamer? Six gamer? And here's a trade. A lock. Bruin second and Steen for Rodriguez. Speaking of players, that's the top six, top nine potential forward. I don't know what his overall is, but hey, we need... You know, a guy in there. Let's see what he's looking at here. We're looking at a 79 in depth. Oh, we're looking at... You want to give us a, a player scratching every night? Okay, well, he's actually doing really solid. I'm talking trash on him. Guy's got 16 minutes, 11 goals, 18 assists, 29 points. He's actually been playing really well. But I just... I don't know. I don't know. I don't trust the, the depth forward in him. Being 26, that concerns me. Take a look at how his takeaway giveaways are looking so far this year. He has 26 by 31. He's actually playing great defensively. Very, very solid defensively. That might be a good piece for us. But you want us to give up a lock for him? Like, are you kidding me? A lock in a second? You would think we was getting a Giselle in the back or something. For a Giselle, whatever it is. I like that word these days. But you're going to... Just for Rodriguez? That is steep. I can't give up a lock, Steen, and a Bruin second for Rodriguez. I'd love to make it work. I can't do that. No. I'm sorry. That just seems way too much. I mean, our backup goalie is going to play some games. He's going to win us some games. The big part of this team right now. I know it's a backup goalie. And I was willing to wheel and deal. And at the end of the day, I was going to say, well, it, you know, you can play it. So it's just a backup goalie. Come playoffs, we won't need him. But I think we got to get something. You can't just give us a depth forward that's a 26-year-old, 26-27, 27-year-old player. That's a 79 overall. And expect us to give a second-round draft pick for him, too. That's just too steep. But 34 and 21, these Bruins are right now. Definitely going to make some moves. We'll see how this team's performing right now, though. We'll see. 85 points out of that first line. Those guys are absolutely killing it. 85 points out of Marsh. Or 80 points out of Marsh. 85 out of Pastor. Like, ah, that's crazy. These guys are just taking care of business. It's crazy how these guys 27, 27, 25, 10, 8. And then we get down here to our other players. And it's just, it's struggling. Norton's only minus 4 now. So that fourth line has been helping him a bit. But Coyle's a minus 8. Crazy's a minus 10. Richie's a minus 10. DeBrusque is a minus 13. Like these guys, DeBrusque, that's a second liner, right? And he's a minus 13 with only th well, 30 points ain't bad. But man, a minus 13. Why are we doing so bad here, fellas? I want to see better than that. 26 by 25, decent. 34 by 86. Krejci's just giving the puck away at will. Maybe that's the problem here. Minus 10, four goals, 32 assists. Do I really want to sell Krejci though? It means an 85 overall. He's got to start bouncing back, right? I mean, he struggles in the dot though too. 76 faceoffs. It's a lot to be asking for out of Krejci. 48% on the season. I mean, he isn't terrible on the season, but 46 on the season for Charlie Coyle. 113 hits, 30 hits. He really isn't doing much. Oh, I'm, I'm looking at that wrong. 86 takeaways, 34 giveaways. Okay, that's a lot better, Krejci. He was about to get cut from the team. I'm glad I misread that. 41 by 17. That's McAvoy. 39 by 27 for Nordstrom. He looks like he's probably struggling the most when it comes to his Nordstrom. Out of all these guys with the takeaway giveaways, maybe Nordstrom's the guy we replace... How's he doing point production wise? I know he's a minus earlier in the year. He's doing six goals, 11 assists. Not something we need to keep. Like I said, a left wing or a right wing would be something ideal to look for here for this team, I think. Most certainly. Hey, we look at the standings here. We are currently giving up. That is Tampa. Three goals a game. All goals for a game. 3.5 goals for per game is nuts. 3.16 goals a lot. That is way too high. Way too high. We are not winning Stanley Cup games. We're not winning playoff games, allowing that many goals again. Power play percentage is 27.2. The penalty kill is actually really good, too. 82.3. I don't know what we got to do here. I guess maybe we even look at the defense here. I didn't want to call out the defense. I thought the 80 overalls was a good base to have here, but if we're giving up that many goals a game, something has to be a problem here. And I'm assuming we'll take a look, but I am assuming it's not Tuka Rask. No, man, it is Tuka Rask. 903 save percentage. What's going on, Tuka? Tuka, you're the franchise player here. Go bounce back. I have a feeling he'll bounce back. Maybe it's the bad defense, though. It could be the defense killing him. The defense says, yeah, that's pretty balanced here. Nobody's really carrying the team. Everybody's a positive, but it just means everybody's playing with the first line a little bit there, it looks like. We'll take a look over here and see if we can't improve something. 19 minutes a night, 15, 12 out of Miller. The takeaways, giveaways, giveaways, 46, takeaway seven. Yeah, Miller, you're terrible, buddy. You are getting taken off this team. 46 to seven. Maybe that's a start, but wow, you, you give the puck away as a defender at the end of the day. 46 blocks, but he's just lacking in every single category on this team. And the, the specifically the takeaways, when you are third on the team in giveaways, last in takeaways, you're playing on the fourth line, last in block shots, you're doing something wrong there. So we'll look for a defender and we'll look for a winger. 
Looks like the place to go here for defense is Vancouver. They are willing to just wheel and deal everybody. Let's see what we got to work with here. Plus two out of Edler. Five goals, nine assists. He's playing a lot. Uh, I'll take a look at Myers. Just a quick look here. Minus 26. Hard pass. That was a good signing. Minus 26. You can stay where you're at, pal. You just, just enjoy your life over there, all right? How many minutes is Tanev playing? 24. It looks like Tanev and Edler might be playing together here, if I had to assume. Take a look at some stats here. See if they got anything else going that might be enticing over here. 74 blocks, 48 giveaways, 22 takeaways is not terrible. 106 hits, plays the body down quite a bit as well. Playing 23 minutes a night. What was his role as well? I mean, he's a plus two. He's got to be one of the better pluses on Vancouver Canucks right now. Top four defensive. Where do you look at the player? There it is, two-way defender. I always thought he had an offensive defense. Oh, he's a two-way defender. Defense is 88. Face-offs, who cares? Shot blocking, 89. Stick checking, decent. Uh, slap shot, wrist shot. Again, not too concerned about it. But if we can pick him up, he's got some trade value to him. That's a little bit difficult. We'll see if Tanev's the better option. We'll take a look at both of these guys here. Just in case, Tanev, 90 hits, 93 blocks, 55 giveaways, 18 takeaways. It's close. It looks like he blocks a few more shots than Edler does. But he does give the buck away a little bit more. He doesn't take it away as much, I think. So, I mean, you, you give and take there. I'd like to get the guys that don't give the puck away as much, give as many takeaways. He's It's close. 48 by 22. And then what was Tanev? He was... Take a look here real quick. He is 93 by... Eight. I guess it isn't that much different. The giveaways are higher. The block shots are better. We'll just see what they want for either one of these guys right now. Tanev, exact, his potential. Let's take a top four defenseman. And you want to be top four defenseman? Okay, perfect. We'll go Edler here. Let's trade for assets. See what they want for Alexander Edler. Bruce up that defense a little bit. The thing is, he's got a six mil salary, but we're at the end here near the trade deadline. So we should have more cap space. It's not looking like we can afford him still, though. We got to drop David Backus. You think they're game for that defenseman? I already tell you who I'm shipping out the door. You want him? You want our good friend that is a 79 overall whose name I don't remember. I was not happy with Miller, I think, right? Was it Miller? It was Miller. It is indeed 2.5 mil on a cap hit too. So that actually will put us in better cap issue or less cap issues there. I don't know how much of this they have to retain because if this game fixed and I thought they did, I thought they made it where retaining salary was, it wasn't as bad during the trade deadline. You didn't have to take as much. They didn't have to take the whole 6 mil on anymore. So I thought that would help a little bit. I'm assuming these guys want draft picks being that they are Vancouver. They're probably still somewhat in a rebuild phase. So we'll throw them a second and we'll throw them Miller. I don't think that's going to be enough. We'll take a look here. Trade rejected would be one of those occasions where the trade block paid off. And I, I love when EA hits me with the it'd be it'd pay off if you look at the trade block. Because I don't know if they looked at the trade block, but Edler, they want to trade. Miller, they want. Bruins draft pick, they want. So I, I don't know who's not looking at the trade draft. Trade dead, blah, 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 trade dead block. But yeah, the trade dead block. Happy Halloween. But I'm pretty sure it's us doing it right. Rejected. On the surface, here looks good, but we are not on keen on keeping that amount of salary. You want to, oh, see, that's the issue here. But I want to be able to trade for one more guy. I don't know. Uh, we'll drop it a little bit. That's probably not going to fix the issue. No. A second, a third. If we throw in one more draft pick. See, I know how the salary works, though, with EA. Like, even if we throw in another draft pick, they're just going to say, no, we're not going to do that. Yeah, that's the problem there. Yeah, uh, man, I don't want to retain that, though. That's killer. Because I want to be able to make a little bit more, you know, a little bit more room here. We'll try 1.175. Let's retain a little bit for us. Some changes were made to the salaries, but the Vancouver Drugs are not interested in the deal at this point in time. You shut your mouth, Vancouver. Please and thank you. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it, Vancouver. I love you guys. Accept the trade offer with a sixth round pick. So you want us to throw in a seventh. Is that what you're saying? You want a seventh round pick from Boston? I'm telling you what, those Boston seventh rounders, pretty solid draft picks. I would accept that. And clearly I'm not their GM because they declined it. We'll try, let's try another fifth. Let's try a fifth for 2021. They're just going to be that way about it. They're just going to be that way about it. We can't take the salary. Uh, why you gotta be like that, Vancouver? I'm just gonna keep nickel and diamond you. I'm gonna keep doing it. Watch me. We'll go back down here, I guess. You know, Boston's got salary cap issues. What if we go right here? 5.25. We really shouldn't have salary cap issues. It's the end of the season, EA. Fix it. We got like three months of rental here. I don't think we can make this trade straight up. We'll try it. There you go. You greedy son of a guns, you. Uh, we'll leave it. We'll go to roster moves because I don't want them to mess with their players. We'll go back here. Edit lines. Take a look at that defense. We're going to stick you right here. Sorry, John Moore. I'm not going to do that to you, Edler. I won't make you play with John Moore. That's just rude. 
No offense, John Moore. Actually, we might. Plus one right there. What if we put Carlo here? See, that's going to hurt the overall. And they don't want to play on a fourth line. That's the problem. He's a four, top six. Moore's happy there. Is Carlo happy there? No. We just might spruce up that deep pair, though. Char definitely don't want to be there. I don't even know why I thought that would be a good idea. We'll stick you here, that there. The thing is, we're dropping an overall point. I know it's not a big deal. But I would like to try to keep the overalls as best as possible where we're helping this team. Edler and Carlo is the answer here, it looks like, on the third line. Keeping John Moore in a second, though. How's John Moore done? Plus 10. He hasn't been bad. Plus 10. Plus 10 for John Moore with... Let's take a look at them stats. 41 giveaways, 16 takeaways. Not terrible. 61 blocks as well. So it's not that bad. How's Carlo been? Was he a minus so far this year? I feel like he was a minus. Now he's a plus 7 with 19 minutes a night. Moore's been playing 15. Maybe Moore should stay here. That doesn't affect that too much. Moore and Edler... I guess we're just going to spruce up that third line D pair. We'll see how it does. Maybe it works out for us. But again, we'll try to look for a winger now. See what else is on this trade blood dead block here. I want to quit calling it the trade dead block, but it's just, it's coming through the mind right now for some reason. Keep trading around in that trade dead block. See what else is out here real quick. Vancouver is good. Looks like Janssen for the least 80 overall is not terrible, but maybe we can get an 81 in there. Alexander Steen, that salary cap is just too high for us right there. We can't work on that. Janssen might be the answer here. 78 on Branson, 81 in Nolan Patrick. Really? Nolan Patrick on the trade block. Just giving players away. And Niskanen, we can't afford. Braun, same story. We don't need. Um, Anderson, no. New Jersey, I don't want your draft picks. I don't know why you're giving away. You're still sort of rebuilding. New York, again, no. Ryan Strom, but he has no trade value. He's 26. 80 overall. How's he been? Minus 12. We're looking for some defensive forwards here, buddy. Sorry about that. Andrew Ladd, Broussard. Broussard might be the answer. How's Broussard? 2A forward, 12 minus 8, 12 goals, 25 assists. Even more appealing, though. Josh Bailey, 101 takeaways. What is going on over there? 29 giveaways, 101 takeaways. If we're looking for a defensive man... Josh Bailey might be the answer. He's got a little bit of a high salary, though. And he's got a little bit of a high trade cap or trade amount as well. But they're willing to get rid of him. And it looks like we can't currently afford him. We'll try to throw on. Another team is probably not going to want to retain any salary. How long has he got left in that contract, too? And I, I, not that we care. We're going to keep him for years. He's got five years left. Boston ain't doing that. They're playing Pasternak like a million more than this. But... You have to retain some of that salary. We can't make the trade even if we wanted to. Without a player on, though, Josh Bailey, you guys are probably interested in... Let's take a look here. I know what you guys want. You want this guy, whose name I don't know how to say. Vakarainen? Vakanainen? 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 It's probably like Vakanainen. Vakanainen might be close. That, that's impressive. It's a top four defenseman, though, and that is just... That's a good asset to give away for Josh Bailey. Are we really willing to give away defense? The future of the Bruins for a one chance at a Stanley Cup? Maybe we go Frederick instead. Frederick, somebody they want. We'll drop that, add Frederick, and we will throw on a draft pick. Again, we are having salary cap issues. It might cost us a bit for Josh Bailey. We'll give up a first round for him. The guy's been defensively stout. He's a great forward as well. Put him with somebody good on his team. Might help him out. But again, he's going to have to retain some salary because we cannot afford to make that, I don't believe. Go up to about 2 mil and see what happens here. Yeah, they're still not going to let us. Again, I, well, the thing with Josh Bailey, though, he's a long-term play. Yeah, we can't get rid of that. Play. Ah, it's tough. That is tough. Let's see what we got for wingers that we can go out and pawn off to these guys as well. We have nobody worth anything here besides Martian. Can't get him out the door. Nordstrom's worth a million, but I know ah, that's who he's going to replace. Well, that get us in the issue. How much do they have to retain? We have to have a little bit of cap space, don't we? Apparently not. Nordstrom's not going to get the job done for us. Right wing, Seneshin. All right, Wings, the same story. We don't have any laying around. David Backus is the issue, but I don't think anybody's done take David Backus. Story of our lives, right? David Backus. David Backus. I know where you are. Right? You're not on the trade value podium anywhere, but you got the salary laying around. You know that? There he is. Good old David. Wow, well, Coyle's getting $3 million a year, too. I'm, we're going to try to distinguish. Let's do it. We're going to have to do some twisting and turning. The honors will be over the salary cap. Oh, we have like maximum salary cap. That's not my problem. Fix it. Fix the issue here. We're giving you Bacchus. What else do you want? Every team wants a Bacchus. He's a good player to scratch when playoffs come around here. Apparently, we're still having salary cap issues. Let's go right here. 1.25. We're going to be stuck here. Though. We're going to have to work with what we have. That's what it's going to be a concern about this. Trade rejected. On the service trade looks good. I'm not keen on keeping that amount of salary you want us to. I don't have a choice. I literally do not have a choice. You have to take that salary, I think. You shouldn't have to take that salary. Who am I kidding? We're giving you a higher cap guy back. 
that should work would you take that trade trade rejected we are saving you're, you're saving what you're saving that cap space for john Tavares? is that what you're saving for new york tell me about it let's talk about it we're saving we're pending, saving, pending for it no you're not you're not saving pay, no no i'll show you what a free agent looks like second round draft pick what about that yeah i knew you liked it I know you like that. I'm a little bit afraid to see what we just did to this team, though, because we just dropped back his. Yeah, I mean, he's going to get cut in playoffs anyway. What do we need him for? But Josh Bailey is a big addition to this team, I think. With O'Bailey in there, I'm a little afraid to look at these centers. You know, we got Scratch, Lindholm, Javi Ben. You haven't played all year. Fourth line forward, bottom six. 80 on the draw. This is for whatever that's worth. 82 defensive awareness. Maybe you can make this work for us, buddy. We got a lot of forwards laying around here, though. Nonetheless, the right wings that are scratch we don't have any left wing scratch we don't have any that's probably gonna be who we have to put there is lindholm can we look for a forward to play down see that's killing us right there a minus two way to go lindholm way to help us out fella you know what now we got to look for a center real quick <laughs> try to pick up the centers and just ship that out the door i'd like us to get a two-way center which lindholm is but he is apparently not the answer because we're a minus two there that's because he's a minor our fourth line guy we need a third line centerman see if we can pick one up here real quick all right, so he's not third line, he's second line. That's Eric Stahl, second line forward right here. 39 points, but we're just, at this point, I think we're just looking for anything. And these guys are willing to will and deal on pretty cheap here for 39 by 46. Not terrible, not a lot of block shots. I'd like that to be better, but he's positive in the face-off circle as well. And he's an 85 overall, so he's got some pretty good numbers there. Apparently, we're still having cap issues, even though it says we don't have cap issues. Let's try that right there. Now we don't have cap issues. We're going to go third, we're going to go Zuberell. Eric Stahl playing the win right here. Two years left on that contract. Great rejected. Can live with what you're asking to send your way. We're glad to pay attention to that. You've met our trade block needs enough, but the value you have on the trade block is far off. Okay, fine. We'll throw one more player on there. Not another player. We'll throw on a fourth round draft pick. What do you think about that? Not enough. Okay. All right. I understand. I understand. Eric Stahl's got one point so far in seven games this year. He's totally worth a little bit more than two fits in a six. I understand. I see where you're coming from. I feel you. I really do. I feel you. Yeah, I'm feeling what you're putting down here. You want a fifth round pick as well. I knew that's what they didn't want. I knew it. I just knew it. I guess we're going to have to pay a little bit here. Boston, again, it's not like Boston's draft picks are going to be any good. They're going to be a playoff team that's going to have like a late second, late first every year. We'll throw in a second. We're playing to win the Stanley Cup this year. I and mean, We get Eric Stahl for two years. Maybe he can, you know, show up next year. But he is then again going to be like 36 years old. But hey, we're only playing for this year. Sorry, Boston. Trading the farm system away. Eric Stahl is now a Boston Bruin and our team is now complete and ready for a playoff run i think i'm a little bit scared i might have just played bad gm right there for whatever reason not feeling too good about that we'll go ahead and fix this line right here you can play here sorry to bring it to your providence but we really don't care if you do good or not uh, i didn't say that i didn't say that i did say that we, we completely said that sorry boston and then we're gonna throw instead of lindholm we're gonna put our good friend eric Stahl here hopefully that helps this team out that is going to that didn't change the overall bit no i knew it i knew it was because he's a second line checking guy that's the problem do we have any third line guys here josh well josh bailey should not be on a fourth line that's the first issue put josh bailey here. that should fix the problem maybe we put corrali here what do we put him here that is not going to do the answer either i forgot all about josh bailey not being on the right line i didn't have to mess with that i guess oh well oh well second line there and then we got third line second line second we got a lot of second liners for whatever that's worth Martian can't be changed. You go here, you go here, you go here. That looks fantastic. At least it's balanced. And I do think we have a little bit of depth. So you know what? We're going to make that work. We will make that work. Special teams. There's got to be something with the immersion. That looks fantastic. That's not what I'm looking for. The regular power play. Martian, Bergeron, Pontiac, Krug, and Krejci. I mean, we got a plus one on a power play. And the power play has been doing well. The penalty kill has been doing well. So that's something we won't mess with, I guess, at the end of the day. Minus ones, though. I do not like seeing those minus ones. Crowley, Wagner, Carlo uh let's see if we can josh bailey should not be on the penalty kill maybe that is the problem we are having here let's see if we can swap wagner out for somebody pasenak and richie what if richie plays there they're gonna put us at zero no it's not of course it's not there should be a whoa pasenak is not going there there should be a feature where you can just like best chemistry your lines together heinen can you play right there minus one you're gonna play right there now i guess we're just gonna leave it like that a minus one on both of those we can't really change that the penalty kill has been terrible and it's not going to change but again i brought it up before 83 percent this so far on the season on a penalty kill so i know it's you know minusing on the chemistry but i'm playing well 
I just hope these decisions we just made right here did not hurt the team in the long run and we can go ahead and be a successful playoff team. We're currently 13 games of 500. We'll see where we are at the end of the season. So far, so good. A win and overtime loss. And a second overtime win, but this time it went to the New York Rangers. So we're not doing too bad, I don't think. Lost to the Oil. Okay, we're doing bad. We lost to the Oilers. Back to back over here, Calgary, Vancouver. Gotta win these. I'm feeling like a bad GM, a little bit nervous here. Don't do this to me, Boston. Let's reel off some wins here. Make me feel good about this GM job we just did. But I'm, I'm really, really, I don't know what it is for the first time we've done this. I'm just not confident in the trades. I don't know what it is, but I'm just, I'm not there right now. I just feel like, I think the defensive move was all right, but I think the forward finagling we had to do to squeak Josh Bailey in there might have been a little bit of a reach. Regardless, 17 games above 515. What was it before? 13. So we are doing better. We're still winning. The month of March has been a heck of a lot better. Thankfully, we're going to end this season close to 50 wins. We have a game against Carolina. We can get 47 here. That'll give us close to 100 points. And we're going to lose the Carolina. We're going to be the three seed in the division. Not good. Not good at all. Got the Leafs in the first round. We'll see if this defense can stifle the Leafs. First things first, though, let's take a peek at some of these stats here real quick. Like I said, man, we had the division. We gave it away with Pasternak. Bergeron, Marchand killed it. 107, 101, 95. What a season. Corey Krug, 57. Krejci got that plus minus up to a minus nine. So he finished a little bit strong at the end of the season. Eric Stahl, I don't think he really changed much either, if I ain't mistaken. I would take a look at the stats just to see how he's doing. Make sure he's still winning faceoff draws. He is at a very good clip, 54 by 54.9. And they reset his takeaway giveaways once he came to the team. Yeah, they did. Of course. Perfect. That's right. It splits right there. I love it. He's been doing solid. 11 takeaways, 8 giveaways. I don't think that's too bad there. I know he doesn't like where he's playing as far as his role is concerned there. Coyle can probably be the same store. Not Coyle's on the right line there. Minus 7 for Debrus Kynan. Minus 5. Uh, minus 7 there out of Corrali. Again, a concern. Richie is still minus 13. He is struggling more than anybody. Maybe Richie should be the one not playing. I forget who he benched. It wasn't right. Oh, no. We threw Nordstrom out. 23 giveaways, 27 takeaways, uh, 84 hits nine minutes he isn't playing a lot though he's only playing nine minutes a night but he's a minus 13 doing so yeah edler's been doing since he came to the team as well here real quick edler how you been doing edler 22 hits 21 blocks decent 13 giveaways nine takeaways not terrible not terrible we can live with that he is only playing 12 minutes a night now over here and he is a oh wow he, oh, oh minus eight hmm he was a plus two before he came over here we threw him on our team and he's a minus eight not good not good at all. I think he is on our fourth line, though, so we cannot miss it. That's what I was afraid of. I always think of Edler as a more of an offensive guy. He said he was two-way in this game. His stats didn't look terrible, but I was afraid he'd go down. But, I mean, he's playing with John Moore now. Sorry, John Moore, but he is playing with John Moore now. So there is that to be looking at. I'm not going to show us the stats from this screen right here. I think we'll be all right. Eric Stahl, Richie was the concern. He's been struggling with that minus. Again, I can't look at the stats in there. Let's see if we have anybody scoring. Perhaps that might be a better option here. Grizzlick and Clifton is way too low of an overall. And then we have Lindholm. Lindholm is a bottom six guy as well. He has not played all season, though. I don't think he has not. And last season he played, and you can't look at those stats because that was from a game. Or from the actual game, I should say. I don't I don't think we have anything. Is there anything in the age how we can look at here? Maybe Fitzgerald? Ooh, what about Bjork? Bjork's an 80 overall. 19 goals, 35 assists, plus 22. He's a third line forward type of role player here. I like it. 67 by 24, a little bit more defensive. Let's call up York. Call up York, send down Richie and hope for the best. Let's make some right before playoff start adjustments to the team. Who needs line chemistry? All right, so here's what we're looking at now. When we go out there and pick York up, it doesn't get us a plus in the categories down here for these overalls, which is not good, but I think we can make it work. York over there is definitely an upgrade. Corrali, York, Corrali, 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 Corrali. Do you want to be the one to play center? Let's make sure Corrali's winning face-offs here real quick. He should be because he had the better draws. He's, yeah, he's winning 52%. Perfect. That's great. That'll work. I believe Corrali there. York's, uh, York's there. Nebraska's here. And we should be good to go now. I don't think we changed anything else. Like I said, the power play, we don't really mess with that. Penalty kill looks fantastic. Penalty kill is actually a minus one. It could be fantastic, -er, but it's not. Let's, you know what? Let's put York out here. And then you get off of this. We'll put York out there. Not scratch. He is currently playing right wing. Left wing. Left wing York. He can go here. He's a 2A forward. I feel like he can get some penalty time there. Is that going to help at all? No. 
but it's got to be better than Josh Bailey, right? What's Josh Bailey's defense? Uh, 787. Who am I getting? Josh Bailey's been in tank this year. He's got, a, like, what, 110 takeaways or something? He was killing it when we traded for him. So I was a little bit surprised to see him struggling on our team a little bit with a plus minus. But here we go. Toronto in the first round. Did we mess this up? Toronto cannot beat Boston ever. So this should be an easy series for us, right? 2-0 series lead early. We'll see you at Toronto. This is the time, though. They're going to go over the hump eventually. It's just a matter of time. This could be the year. And we don't want it to be the year. So let's not lose in our home games. That'd be fantastic. Two straight losses at home. Not good. Another loss. This one to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Again, 2-1. to one. All right, we're going to sim this game up. This could be it, though. It's a home game. Boston. We had to bring up how Boston's been dominating the Leafs up 2-0 early. And they're going to get reverse swept almost pretty much essentially here. There it is. A big victory. We're going to game number seven in Toronto. Maple Leafs, you guys need to settle down here. We don't need any of that crazy shenanigan stuff where you guys win this series in seven. That does not seem fun. Bjork, there's our man. York with the goal. Nylander as well, making an impact. We're going to period number three. This game is all knotted up. A low scoring affair as we can expect in playoffs. A very gritty game. Big save on Heinen and Bergeron. Freddie Anderson doing what Freddie Anderson does. Making save after save after save. And then when he does let one in, we are going to blame the officials on it. There we go. Oh, Toronto with the goal. Toronto with a massive goal right after Corrali once again was just sitting on Freddie Anderson's lap. Doesn't matter. Makes the save. Willie Nylander with the goal from the top of the point there. Unreal. That is crazy. If yeah, Boston can bounce back here. These guys have been dominating so far. The shots for Boston's been great. Here's a power play. Can they stop that dominant power play of the Boston Bruins? They can. Nothing doing here. Five minutes left. This Boston team, we clearly did not build what we unbuilt and went and ruined it by the way it's looking because this team's about to lose in the first round to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Two to one. Boston's going to lose it. Wow. Not a good GM. That's that's rough to think of all the teams. I think this is one we struggled with the most was the Boston Bruins in the first round. We couldn't get past that first round. We talked about it, though. I mean, as rough as it is, out of all the teams we've done so far, this has been by far the hardest division to get out of once you get to that first round. So there is that to look forward to. I think it's like, well, you know, we did struggle, but... It was a tough division. We could have completely stacked this team and still probably lost to a team like the Leafs or a team like the Lightning who have been really good. Looks like the Anaheim Ducks, though, are going to win the Stanley Cup. We'll see if we brought any hardware home. I'm assuming, oh, we could have brought home a Selkie, I guess. The Selkie's there. The way this team played, though, Bergeron, Marchand, Pasternak, one of those guys might have brought home an individual award as well. 107 points. That is definitely worthy of it. We'll see. McDavid had the Art Ross, though, and the Hart. So it looks like McDavid outpointed him. Norris went to Carlson. Pasternak did get the early being. What a nice guy. Jack Hughes getting a Calder. Smythe going to Raquel. Mrazek getting a Vesna and a Jennings. Masterton, Alexiak, O'Donnell with the Jack Adams. Franklin J went to Ryan O'Reilly for the second straight year. Ted Lindsay going to McDavid and Maurice Richard going to Mr. Richard himself. Oh, Vetchkin. Otherwise, no, that's going to conclude this video. If you guys enjoyed it, a big thumbs up. Subscribe be appreciated if required. Otherwise, thank you guys for watching and we will see you next time.